Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Knowledge. So I again welcome to you all to yet another tutorial at Programming Knowledge. So in today's tutorial, uh, with the continuation of competitive coding with Python, so guys, you can move to this GitHub link and you will get all the uh, codes, uh, codes implemented in Python prior to this tutorial. So today what we are going to get started with dynamic programming. Uh, the word dynamic programming uh, tells us that uh, we do some computations which are dynamic in nature those computations are uh, we calculate something compute something which are di uh, dynamic in nature and the, the uh, dynamic pro programming uh, basically depends on this structure of the problem that is overlapping sub problems and we are going to solve today uh, fibonacci using dynamic programming but first we need to uh, think that dynamic programming works on first principle of dynamic programming is that dynamic programming works on uh, many uh, few factors one is overlapping sub problem so i would also detail uh, explain this uh, what is overlapping sub problem and next thing dynamic programming depends on memoization so that is we do memoization and and uh, third thing is tabulation so tabulation memoization so basically this is 1d one dimension on array and this is 2d on matrix so you can say memoization uh, is on 1d array and tabulation is on 2d array and the nature of the problem should be overlapping sub problem so what is overlapping sub problem i'll uh, tell you and you can move to this github link and you will get all the codes and let's start with today's tutorial so today's tutorial first we are going to uh, implement in the nave code of fibonacci series that is define define fibonacci n if n equal equal to 0 or or n equal equal to 1 then we return n because this is the base case the first uh, the zeroth fibonacci number is 0 the first fibonacci is 1 and then we continue the series else we compute this return fibo of n minus 1 plus fibonacci of n minus 2 so i'll define two test cases p is equal to int input and for i in range p n is equal to int input p ticket integer n as an input and then print fibonacci of n now uh, we'll take some sample test cases okay i'm sorry for the structure of the code uh, so i'll take fibonacci test cases yeah so this is perfect so uh, the so uh, i'll also explain how you do go see this is the number of test cases 6 is the number of test cases and i have few six inputs 9 23 35 22 99 140 so here you can see the ninth fibonacci number is 34 i'll zoom this sorry so here you can see the ninth fibonacci number is 34 this is the fibonacci series that is 0 1 second fibonacci number third fibonacci number fourth fifth number sixth number seventh number eighth number and ninth number is ninth fibonacci number is 34 okay so I, i'll tell you a difference but before that i'll compute this uh i'll copy this test cases and now what i'll do i'll run this so here you can see that i have computed the first two but i'm waiting for other results so it is taking me a lot of time to compute Fibonacci numbers of such a long range. So here you can see that the output of the first four test cases had uh, second two, uh, two test cases had come very early, but then uh, uh, just a matter of second, then the third and fourth had come, and the fifth and sixth uh, out uh, test case, the output of fifth and sixth test cases hasn't been arrived yet, and it is still pending. So what I wanted to tell uh, tell you that this is not the uh, right approach to solve, because I'll tell you first I'll discuss the time complexity. See, this is a recurrence relation of p of 
n for uh, n i'll compute t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 so this is the reconciliation because see for n for n depend the value of n minus 1 and the value depends on n minus 2 as well so reconciliation becomes this and when i uh, solve this reconciliation so i'll get the time complexity of this code as 2 to the power n okay so i'll take a difference let us consider let us take a value of n let n be equal to 10 okay with recursion the time complexity with recursion i'll say with recursion time complexity is 2 to the power n 2 to the power n and i'll substitute the value 2 to the power 10 is so we all know 2 to the power so I, i'll break this program so here you can see um, uh, so i'll i'll show you the 2 to the power 10 is 1024 so it will make 1024 calculations so i uh, uh, this what cal means 1024 calculations and with dynamic programming dp time complexity would be time complexity would be n i mean big o of n and this is big o of 2 to the power n also so and the calculation would be only 10 so and plus i'll depend on memoization as well i'll explain this what is memoization memoization plus memoization in dp so uh, so what i'll do memoization so uh, what what you can do so mem uh, i'll uh, uh, with memoization what you can do uh, depending uh, if you have already calculated the previous value then there is no need to calculate it again so i'll give you a very good example see if i have calculated the ninth fibonacci number that is 34 so i'll store all these value in an array i'll store them because if someone asks me the eighth fibonacci number in the next test case so i can already give that answer from the pre-computed value I repeat the pre-computed value is very important must here if like suppose if I have calculated all the Fibonacci numbers till here see the highlighted ones if I have calculated the all the Fibonacci the blue symbol shows that I have already calculated all the Fibonacci numbers here so the highlighted with the blue color now if I want to tell this Fibonacci number I'll tell because I have already computed till here I'm uh, for example if let's take a sample test case here if i've computed the ninth fibonacci number to be 34 then i can already tell the eighth one the seventh one the sixth one then the fifth one then the fourth one then the third one the second one and the first one and the zeroth one because i have already calculated till the ninth fibonacci number so i'll show you how we use dynamic programming with a dynamic array in the 1d uh, 1d fibonacci series let's do this using the dynamic programming okay so I'll comment this code just for the uh, I'll comment out this code. Yeah. Now, what you can do, what you can do, uh, what you can do, we'll define a global Fibonacci dynamic, global Fibonacci dynamic list, which is already having a value of zero on one. And I'll define a function. So the scope of this list is global. Global list list for all test cases. Okay, global list for all test cases. Let's define a define Fibonacci of n. If n less than len of global fib dynamic then i can return i can simply return global fib dynamic of n 
because I have already computed it. This means I have I have already computed for for previous test cases. Previous previous test case. So this means that I have com already computed for previous test case and now we are using that value and now only returning the value since pre computed already and no need to compute again hence we memoize the solution okay so else if not computed then compute compute the value if not computed then we compute the value but what we'll I'll show you how we compute this else for i in range uh, I'll tell len and len I'll take the len of this array comma n plus 1 so I'll make a big screen here see and, uh, and now last is equal to uh, you can see the, the negative index I'll, this will return me the last value the second last value would be minus 2 then what I'm going to do global fib dynamic dot append I'll do last plus second last and now what I'm going to do then return global fib dynamic of n so here you can see so let then now if I've already computed then I'll take the I'll compute from that length of the array because what's already computed I'll use the result here so let me just check the program if n less than global fib dynamic okay perfect perfectly fine so then return global fib of dynamic of n else if not computed then compute the value using memoization using memoization perfect now how do i compute for i in range len global fib dynamic n plus one so i'll go take go till n values and last one would be this second last one with this then I would return the then I would append the value and this one return the global fib dynamic. Uh, what I can also do global fib of dynamic of n. perfectly fine. So let me show you some test cases. So I'll take some test cases, five test cases. So I'll uh, zoom the screen now. If I get to uh, find this, let me show you. This is the first Fibonacci number. So yeah, I have already the first Fibonacci number 0, 0,1 simply because I have it. Let me calculate the second Fibonacci number. Yes, here you can see how the uh, uh, this global array uh, is dynamically updated. Now let me do the ninth one. Simply say, yeah, and these pre-computed value will be used for the next test cases. Please uh, emphasize on this fact that these pre-computed values will be used in the next test cases so I won't compute them again these are computed and stored in a global array and this uh, global array will help me that the next value will be only calculated using the previous one so let me type on another big value let me type 50 so here you can see how fast it is and I get all the Fibonacci numbers so the last value was this and let me type another big test cases 140 so such a big test cases and this is the uh, I guess uh, I had the uh, test case at uh, 140 which was giving me a TLE on that recursion but such a quick or such a quick uh, using dynamic programming so thank you guys thank you for catching me in this tutorial I'll, uh, so let's uh, I'll catch up in the next tutorial thank you so much